יעקב לשבת בשלווה, וקפץ עליו לגזור של יוסף. וישב יעקב, the Midrash says, יעקב just wanted to ישב, he just wanted to dwell in peace. קפץ עליו לגזור של יוסף, the anger or the, 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 the discomfiture, the total, up, the total up in, in throwing the cards up in the air, the, the total putting of his life into a, an, another adventure, but the worst and the most difficult yet, happened to him now. Just now, after all these things happened, he wants to live in peace. <coughs> and now, the social Yosef, the whole angry scene with Yosef happened. So Rashi and everybody else learns it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like we said before, you're not going to have peace in this world. That's not your fate, Yaakov. Yishvitz learns it. You want to Shevet B'Shava? You want the true Olam You want the true peace of the next world? Okay, let's go. I'm going to put it all into action now. <laughs> the process is beginning. It's not a punishment at all. It very reminds me similar of a whole conversation between the moon and, and God and the, and the Gemara. And then God says to the moon, go make yourself small. That's not a punishment. That's the way that the moon is going to actually become capable of having her own ground. By becoming small, by going into the, the neshama, has to come down into this world, into this lowly world. Yaakov has to go down into Egypt to become Israel. We have to go down into the dichotomies of life, into the deepest, into the deepest contradictions. What Ishbitz calls in, in Or Yesharim, the Ol Alma Desfeka, the world of doubt, where you can never be sure. It's really putting yourself in Hashem's hand in the deepest way. So I want to share with you now a midrash. That the, I don't know if the, if the Ishvitzer brings this. And one of the main teachings that I learn is the teaching of the Leshem Shvo Vachlama. The Leshem Shvo Vachlama, his name is Rabbi Shlomo El Yashiv. And he also is on this cosmic level. And truly in order to understand anything in Torah, in my humble opinion, in order to understand the Baal Shem Tov, in order to understand Rabbi Nachman, all the different scenes within Chetzidus, you need a juxtaposition of the Torah of the Gona Vilna and the Torah of the Ramchal. You need to see all of these are part of one great Torah called the Torah of the Ari, and that itself is really just a little revelation of the awesome Torah of Hashem. So the greater t- context is provided here in a Midrash that the Leshem explains extensively in his book on a verse in Psalm 66. The Psalm 66 verse Who's the Lashem? What? Who's the Lashem? If the Lashem? Who's the Lashem? Who's the Lashem? The Lashem Shov Achlama Rabbi Shlomo El Yashiv is 1861 to 1926. It's basically um, what, what, when was the uh, the Meir Shiva alive? 1911? 1848. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, he actually died in 1840. Okay, so but at least the Beit Yaakov and everything. We have this is a very very profound time in the in, in our history, the 1800s. The Baal Shem Tov was born in 1698, dies in 1760. See, so all the all the Talmidim are, are taught to go to Eretz before 1840. The, the 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 1800s are, in terms of the world, a pretty dark place. But in terms of our teachings, we, te- we reached up to the highest level. We were in the mud of Ukrainian towns where we even ha- had not even a basic subsistence, but we were in the Olam, Olam HaEmet much of the time. We come to Eretz Yisrael, it's time now to embody those deep Torahs that, are, that, are, that, were, that were coming down in the land of Israel. That is the coming together of Mashiach ben Yudha and Mashiach ben Davi. I just want to share with you this verse. The verse is like this. Lechu uru mif'alot Elohim. Go out and see the deeds of Elohim, which are the, the very powerful uh, um, events of history under the name Elohim. Nora alilam al b'nei adam. He is awesome in his deeds, in his deeds over the children of men. 
But alila here can mean just like in Hodu in the morning, Hodu la donai kiu vishmo, Hodiu ba'amim alilota, make known his deeds, his great deeds. But there's a secondary and perhaps even more important meaning to the word alila, which comes later on in alilata, a blood libel. When somebody blames you for something that you've never done. And so the way the Midrash learns this verse is, Nora alila b'nei adam, God, you are awesome in the way you place the blame for things on man, on human beings, and it's not even our fault. And you bring about the entire Egyptian exile because Abraham said one little thing. You must have had that in mind already before Abraham said that, and you were just waiting to hang it on what he said. That's Nora alila. That's seemingly not fair. But because it's part of your great plan, in the end we'll understand it was awesome. It was awesome. The awesome part will be predominant, and the the fact that it wasn't fair that the way you did it, or it seemingly wasn't fair, that will kind of become absorbed in the whole thing, and we'll just see thankful to you for all of eternity. So Nora Alila is a very powerful concept. I just share with you one of the um, one of the expressions in say, and it's, it's, there's three examples of Nora Alila brought in the midrash in Tanhuma at the end of Parshas Vayeshev, of all places, Vayeshev, because Yosef is being brought down to Egypt. And, it's, and this is now going to be the beginning of the Egyptian exile. And really, on a cosmic level, this is an aspect of godliness that has to go down into the lower world and, and become enslaved and, 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 and under the mindset of Paro. And until Moshe will come and redeem us, until the Mashiach comes and redeems us, like, why does it have to go on like that? What is this Egyptian thing? And of course the Kabbalah says it's in order to return all of the sparks of holiness that fell from Adam. <coughs> but even what Adam did itself was nor Alila. So in a sense where the Leshem goes here is that the whole 6,000 years of history is one is already programmed it's already programmed in the Shriot HaKilim, in the, in the breaking of the vessel. It's an unfolding of a program that's bent on having things happen that are going to seem like there's no God, there's no justice, <coughs> everything is going to go wrong, one thing after the other, history is just one downhill thing, as Stephen Dedlis said, anybody else know the quote besides me, history is a dream, from which, a, a nightmare from which I'm trying to awaken. So what the, the greater sages did, and we have to have this Torah, whether it's through Ishbitz or Rabbi Nachman or the Alter Rebbe or the Leshem and his, is that if we don't see where it's all going, it seems, it's, in other words, within the, the framework that we have of this life, there's no way to make sense of what life is about. So they said to us, well, of course, it's clear. You're right. There's no way to make sense of it. You need a higher reference point. One way I, I usually do it is with this, this diagram. It's the idea that we live in a little bubble down here, but the other outer, the outer levels are there, and they preceded our little level. They're the context within which our little world takes place. And we're promised at the end of this 6,000 years that we'll merge up into the next one, and then up into the next one, until the, the true revelation of godliness that Hashem wanted to reveal from the very beginning will only come in the very end. Because if He would have done it in the beginning, we wouldn't have had the vessels to, make, to, to, make, to retain it. But even now, before those openings, those cosmic openings, there's a doorway within each one of these circles that leads back to the deeper circles. We can have access to these deeper realities even within the framework of this world. I'll open it up soon to questions. And just finish with the, the idea that the lesson brings down. And give a little conclusion. We need to. We need to. At least, um, we need to know how far back it goes, in order to know how far it's going to go, and. Based on those two reference points of eternity into the eternal past, 
and eternity into the eternal future, we can live our lives in a much more awake way. Right? So, and our tshuva can be one that's not based on guilt, but on having beco- becoming awesomely aware that Hashem is with us in our lives at such a deep level, even when we were not aware. And that works for us as individuals.